This is Conference USA on ESPN+. Plus. It's the final game of the regular season. Western Kentucky will be off to its fifth bowl game in five years. FIU with an end of 23 campaign on a high note here in Miami. Glad to have you with us alongside former NFL defensive back Jonathan Cyprian. I'm A.J. Ricketts. Partner of FIE is going to have a chance to get off its three-game snide and head into the offseason with some momentum. Senior wide receiver Chris Mitchell will need to have another big game for FIU. Certainly did last week and certainly has led the Panthers this season. Needs just 73 yards today to become FIU's all-time single-season yards leader. Panthers hoping for another big effort out of Chris Mitchell. Chris Mitchell has been prolific this season. Him being able to take the top off of any defense he's been playing this season and actually his run after catch. Uh, he's been very, very impressive this year and I'm very, very happy to see what he'll do today as far as getting the ball in his hands and breaking that record. It's been a breakout season. Leads Conference USA in receiving yards just past 1,000 last week. Had a touchdown as well at Arkansas. For Western Kentucky, Grad student Austin Reed has led the way once more. He's second all time in touchdown passes for the tops. He's only played there two years. It's been another dynamic season for Austin Reed, who's battled through injuries over the course of this season. As a quarterback, you want someone like Austin Reed to be able leading the charge. And a quarterback like him being able to get the ball in his receiver's hands as he did all season and for the two seasons he's been there is the reason why they're both eligible now and ready for this game today. Reed led University of West Florida to a national championship a couple years ago and has taken his prolific arm to Bowling Green where the Hilltoppers will once again be in yet another bowl game under head coach Tyson Helton in his fifth season. Guiding the tops, Mike McIntyre in year two at FIU. Trying to pick up win number five. The Panthers went four and eight last year. Had a thrilling game on senior day here against Middle Tennessee that they were not able to come out on top of an intriguing storyline here today. Certainly Western Kentucky, FIU. A lot of folks remember last year's meeting up in Bowling Green, 73 to nothing. FIU doesn't have the perk of playing for a bowl game today, but they'll certainly have that in mind as they start this one off today. And as we kick this off, let's see if they do remember that. Easton Messer back to receive. And this will sail into the back of the end zone from Lucas Matias, one of 13 seniors honored free game here on Senior Day at Western Kentucky. We'll set up shop at the 25-yard line. Austin Reed, over 3,000 yards this season, 27 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, 278 yards per game. That leads Conference USA. Panther defense has its work cut out for them today. Hey, I just want to go back for a second and just thinking about this senior day, this last college football game is real special. It means a lot to those guys out there. So we're in for a good treat. Reed will go into the flat on the first play near side. Elijah Young looking for some space. Might have gotten just a yard. That was something, partner, that Western head coach Tyson Helton alluded to. He said usually on these on those final games of the regular season, those senior days, it's either one of two things. The, the team's playing inspired, you see some wacky sort of things happen, or <laughs> it's the exact opposite. Not, not much to play for, a team sort of lies down. He expects the opposite from FIU today. As second and nine, straight up the gut, Young tripped up, gets to the 30. And I like how WKU is starting off the game right now, giving Austin Reed a quick outlet pass to his running back, Elijah Young on the first play and then just handing it off to him on an emotional day like this let the let that quarterback get in a rhythm getting some positive yards and now we're about third and five to see if they can convert we talked about if I use dynamic receiver Malachi Corley on the other side you can make a case top two wideouts in Conference USA are taking the field today third and six re good pocket will flip it near side there's Corley first reception today and that should be a first down for Western Kentucky. Plenty of time in the pocket as those corner, as those crossers padding, patterns were able to develop and he had no, no rush at all. Uh, Corley's gonna get his, this is up the middle for a good gain on first down. Malachi Corley, that was the 70th catch of the year. So now just Four catches away from breaking Western Kentucky's all-time receptions record. That's held by Taiwan Taylor. It's the 250th catch of Corley's career. So records can go down today for both Western and FIU. 
in the wide out spot. Second and six here, two minutes into the first quarter. Empty backfield read, quick out. That's caught Easton Messer turning upfield towards the sideline. And it's a first down for Western Kentucky. Messer, the redshirt freshman from Louisville. 32 grabs now this year for nearly 400 yards. That's great blocking on the perimeter by the other receivers there to make these yak yardages after a catch be able to go for the distance. Putting together an impressive drive right now. I really like the play calling at the moment. Western trying to establish the run here to start things off. Middle of the pack, or towards the bottom, I guess I should say, in this new look conference, USA. Seventh in the league in rushing offense at 11, 111 yards per game. Drew Hollinshed, the offensive coordinator right now, is putting a great drive together, marching down the field, second and about seven. Pistol look here for the tops. The motion messer, play action. Reed slinging it, trying to find River Helms, who's back after missing a game. The Western Kentucky tight end. This will set up a third and seven here for the Hilltoppers. Trevor Boylan there kind of settled inside of a gap where he thought Austin Reed would be able to hit him in. But Austin actually led him to continue to go farther because he didn't see his own defender there. And uh, on that play there, there was just a little bit of miscommunication on how they read the coverage of the defense. A chance for the Panther defense here early to get off the field, third and seven. It's a good situation to have offense third and long. Panthers bring a blitz. Reed still had time and finds Corley out across the 35. Great hands, and the Hilltoppers get a fresh set of downs. When you are looking for a play, especially on a third down, you go to your best players, and they completely had... Makai Corley one on one with the linebacker, and they took their chances with their best guy. Quick tempo to the far side. Here's Dalvin Smith, first reception today. Gain of about five here on first down. Western never afraid to play with a bit of tempo and pace. Got off a tight win against Sam Houston State. Last time out, 28 to 23. And Sam Houston's been on the short of the stick and plenty of games in league action. They're going to be a solid team in Conference USA in their first year in transitioning from the FCS. Reed, backpedaling, off his back foot, had an open man in Young, but overthrew him by about two yards. It got past Reggie Peterson, but off balance was Reed, and that falls to the turf, third down. The WKU offense snuck Elijah Moore out the back end. That play was for sure practiced on for it to be a touchdown as it was man-to-man -to -man coverage as the offense predicted, and it was one-on-one -on -one with FIU's linebacker to be able to make sure that wasn't a completion, and his presence was able to make it an overthrow by Reed. Tops need six. Reed, three-step drop. Right over the middle, it's Young again, scampering for a first down inside the red zone. Just a simple pitch and catch in Western Kentucky, a fresh set of downs. Great job by Young there to be able to get the ball and go vertical. And um, Austin for him to be able to have that outlet of a good running back that's great catching the ball out the backfield. I like how Young's getting involved early on this first drive, both in the receiving game and on the ground. Very early, and that's a great thing for a running back. Panthers bring pressure, Reed, double pumps, and Corley was held as the flag flies. Brian Blades might be a guilty party here for FIU defensively. Reed threw that off of his back foot, and I thought he let it get away, with, get away from him. But let's see what this flag Holding. says if he was. Defense, number 22. The penalty is half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. Yeah, that is on Brian Blades trying to maintain Corley there. Defensive backs with those hands up. What? What did I do? Uh, those, um, those bo that body language usually tells you something's happened and it's usually on the defense, especially when we're speaking pass interference. 
Lester moving right down the field on its first possession. Young remains the tailback. Out into the flat, it's Corley sizing up, getting close to that pylon, taken out by Adrian Cole, getting closer to the goal line here. Two on two out there. It's, it's, uh, the, it's the quarterback's job to be able to count the numbers in the box and outside the box and see where the numbers are favored. That time, Austin Reed was able to give the ball to one of his best players in Corley to be able to uh, get the job done. Great defensive effort by Adrian Cole, a senior tonight. Heavy around the box, pitched, and upended is Corley, but he might have got across the goal line, and he did. Malachi Corley gets in the end zone in Western Kentucky, marches 75 yards down the field on its first possession. Wow, that was something like a shovel pass that they were able to do with Corley, the receiver, coming from the slot position, and a great hit by the FIU defender upending him, but he happened to upend him right into the end zone. A physical tackle, but it was actually beneficial there for, for Corley. His momentum taking him into the end zone. PAT from Lucas Carnero is good. Cornerback Brian Blades with the hit right before him crossing the end zone. So Blades active defensively himself on that first possession. So it's a 75-yard drive here for Western Kentucky, who has been terrific in the first quarters over the course of uh, this season, outscoring opponents 110-18 to 18 in the first frame over the course of the 2023 campaign. It's been an interesting year, a bowl victory last year against South Alabama, really high expectations heading into this season with Reed, of course, returning as quarterback. Malachi Corley had a breakout year last season as well, and they find themselves with six wins heading into the final game. And you know, look, they finish with a win here, seven and five, get a bowl win, get to eight wins. And Tyson Helton was talking about it during media availability this week in, in our conversation with him, said, you know, he does, he's not finished evaluating this season yet, but he feels they've done a lot with what they can, given the injuries and situational things that have happened this year for Western Kentucky. They're very motivated to finish this season strong. You know, as a, as a university, you're always going to be happy about making a bowl game, but there's always winning that conference and a lot more that you can do as a, as a team, especially reaching your goals. And that, that was the first thing he said. He said, look, the, the initial goal, uh, we want to play for championships. That's, that's step number one. And if you're not doing that, look, we will... We want to be making bowl games, and we really take pride in not just making those bowl games, but winning those bowl games here. And that's something they've done three to four seasons since Helton arrived back into Bowling Green is let's get to a bowl game and, and finish on a high note. I mean, if you're chasing a championship, you're more often going to find the bowl games along that way. So our first look at FIU freshman quarterback Kiwan Jenkins. Empty backfield. He finds Chris Mitchell on the first play for a four-yard gain. Remember, Mitch needs 73 yards to pass T.Y. Hilton, the most all-time in a single season here at FIU, your former teammate here. And he's getting started early with the ball in his hands on the first offensive possession. It looks like Kiwan Jenkins knows that he wants to get that 73 today. An outstanding performance from Mitchell last week at Arkansas. Second play, handoff, Shamari Lawrence breaking a couple tackles, gets close to first down yardage. Upton Stout, defensive back for Western Kentucky, re returned last week from an injury. Western very happy to have him back in the lineup. One of the leaders defensively, along with Kendrick Simpson Jr., who leads the team in tackles. Or excuse me. Quarterback Quick sneak, sneak here. here. Yeah, it looked like it was enough yardage. Now, is that anything like the Philly, the, the, the tush push there in Philly to have in the it's NFL? It's all the rage right now across the sport, is it not? Hey, they've actually haven't, they're, what, 99%. They they didn't convert on only one time thus far this season. So, <laughs> hey, it's, if it's working, uh, why, why not? The Panthers move the chains there. First and 10 at the 36 as Mitchell will motion to the near side. 
as they motion there, you're able to see that the defense is in, in a zone, not a man-to-man. -man. Mitchell flushed out of the pocket, being harassed. He'll just toss it out of play. As Jaden Loving, the Bethune-Cookman transfer, was in hot pursuit. Second and long here now. We want to make sure with when it comes to FIU, they're a very momentum-driven team. And the better they're doing, once someone makes a play, the whole sideline starts to erupt. And they're able to the offense is able to feed off the defense, defense off the special teams. And if FIU wants to have a good game today and go off, close this season off right, that's what they're gonna have to do. On second and ten, Jenkins, quick out route. Brought in across the 40-yard line. First reception for Jalen Bracey, one of those seniors honored today. Well, step one for the Panthers is avoiding the kind of start they've had here at home the last two games, which is falling behind 21 to nothing. They've had some slow starts this year. Actually was a much better performance in that department on the road at Arkansas last week when FIU led 13 to 7 after the first quarter. But have had some slow starts here at FIU Stadium, and trying to avoid that kind of vibe out of the gates here. Four yards to gain on third down. Jenkins the pass, finding Mitchell far side, couldn't haul it in. It was a bit away from his body and Jenkins was facing pressure. Simpson's in the area and it's fourth down. That was an interesting way to be able to get Chris Mitchell one-on-one -on -one outside uh, versus a cornerback. And I think on this play, the offense was anticipating the defense to be a man-to-man, -man, but they were in zone. Every time there was a motion, nobody on the defense moved, which tells you that the defense is in zone rather than man-to-man. -man. Dade Montiel to punt. Fair catch called. And Koch just before the 20-yard line. We'll head to break. 7-0 Western Kentucky off to a nice start on the road with the football when we return. Welcome back to South Florida. 7-0 lead for Western Kentucky midway through the first quarter. A.J. Ricketts, Jonathan Sipper. No toppers up by a touchdown. First play on its second drive. We'll stay on the ground for about three yards. Here to start things off, Sip, uh, what was the most impressive aspect of that first drive for Western Kentucky? I would say the way they put the plays together. I love how they got Young involved both in the run and in the pass. As Dalvin Smith hauls in the catch there. I love how they were able to do that and just move down the field methodically. There haven't been a shot of a pass over 20 yards thus, thus just yet, but I like how they're making Players available, ball is out of everyone's hand, out of the quarterback's hands on time. Reed, all sorts of time on the scramble off the helmet of Jamal Potts and falls through the turf, a little underthrown to Marquis Stepp, who was flying down the seam. Great job by the FIU defense there just to be able to stick on their wide receivers as the quarterback scrambles and the receivers try to get open. And again, like Elijah Young in the previous possession, the Western Kentucky tailback actually looks like he got in behind the secondary, but just a little underthrown there by Reed. He still had a nice start to this game. Been banged up in different areas over the course of the year. See that knee brace on his right leg as well, but he has always played through it. And this off on the counter, Davian Irvin Poindexter. It's close to the 35, the transfer from Indiana. Spent three seasons with the Hoosiers. Last year with Western Kentucky, he scored two of his three touchdowns on the season against FIU in that 73 to nothing route. And uh, as FIU sees that familiar face back there, I'm sure they understand of what happened last year and hope to make that a different story today. It has been a theme, a storyline, something talked about in the locker room over the course of this week. Third and seven. Reed, far side, Corley couldn't haul that one in. Just a bit behind him from Reed. That'll force a Western Kentucky punt. First 
That's the first punt from Western Kentucky and Austin Reed being able to get off the field. FIU defense being stout there, led by senior Donovan Manuel and pretty good defensive back C.J. Christian. Christian's been injured a couple caves this year, but has returned from a concussion. Play well in the secondary. End over end punt here. We'll take a bounce around the 40. Patterson will let it roll, but it takes a kind Western Kentucky roll. And Patterson diving on top of it here to try to save about five yards. <laughs> Dangerous in special teams, but able to hang on with no problem. Sends us the break. 527 to play first quarter. Welcome back to FIU Stadium. 7-0 Western Kentucky out of the timeout. Keyjohn Owens getting his first handoff of the game and loses yardage. We'll see where four progress was marked. Actually, may have got a half yard before he was dragged back. A.J. Ricketts, Jonathan Cypria. Panthers trailing by a touchdown on offense for the second time here today. Two-by-two two formation here. Low snap, Jenkins floats it to Owens. We'll make it a third and medium here. Jenkins nearly went for 300 yards last time out at Arkansas. And for the first time in a, in a couple of weeks, just felt like he had a nice pocket to work with. The offensive line for FIU has been banged up over the course of this season. John Bach and Jacob Peace, two starters at the beginning of this year, out for the season. Things on is at center today for FIU. Third down, Jenkins to Bracey. It's going to be short of the sticks, though. Caught at the 35, about two yards short. This is where FIU went for it in the first quarter. Last week at Arkansas, it was right around their own 30-yard line on the first drive of the game. They did not convert. A little less aggressive from Mike McIntyre here, more than midway through the first quarter here today. Learning from their previous mistakes, and we just spoke about FIU finding themselves in trouble being down 21 or more going into halftime. This is being more strategic with the ball and punting in their own side of the football field is not too bad of a d an idea. This will be fair caught towards the sideline, bobbled and then recovered. Tense moment there on the far side from KD Hutchinson. He's had some issues in the punt return game over the course of this season and falls on top of it there. 7 0 Western Kentucky, 349 to play first quarter. Well, we'll actually keep it right here as so they come back on the field. 7 0 Western Kentucky. 3.49 left to play first quarter. Elijah Young tripped up close to the line of scrimmage here. As this first quarter has felt like it's flown by. Final game of the regular season. Time of possession by Western Kentucky has been pretty good with the play calling, mixing in the run and the pass, and uh, the referees actually giving time for substitutions on offense and defense. On second down and 10, Reed steps up in the pocket and fires it low. Blades was full extension to try to keep that away from Craig Burtz Jr. And third down and long coming up here for the Hilltoppers. FIU defense was in a quarters defense there and was able to match well with the receivers as they came downfield. Align that with the pressure and making Austin Reed move. Hey, you got an incompletion in third and long. If the FIU defense can continue to do that, they'll be fine tonight. Hilltoppers three for four on third downs to start the game. Reed is nine for 14 for 64 yards. On third and long, Reed all day to throw. Now steps forward, that's caught. Big hit delivered by Potts. Flags fly for targeting and somehow Craig Burt still held on to the football. That was a huge hit as the defense was in a quarters with zone underneath cover, zone underneath linebackers. And playing with his eyes, he was able to come back at the throw of the ball and deliver a crushing hit to the receiver for Western Kentucky. 
I don't know how Craig Burt managed to hold on. Ruling on, on the was... field is a completed catch. Personal foul, targeting, defense, number seven. The previous play of targeting is under further review. As with all targetings, they're going to take a second look at this as Burt able to walk off on his own strength. But slowly to his sideline as it starts to drizzle here in Miami. That was a high velocity hit delivered from Jamal Potts, but the inherent question, as always, in these situations, did he lead with the crown of his helmet? Did he put his shoulder into him? And was Burt a defenseless receiver in this situation? To me, it looks like he went underneath the chin, which helped hit him directly in the chest. But now, with the rules here in college, with the targeting specifically, it's led with the crown of the head. It's hitting someone with malicious intent. That was a very physical hit, and it can go either way. And it, 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 it appeared After review, turd, but there's just no foul for targeting. Number seven can remain in the game. The result of the yeah, play Bert had was, just a, was turned, a catch. Certainly barely had any time to make any sort of move. But Potts leading with the shoulder. And they quickly reverse that call. So they'll be able to stay in the game. No targeting. But it still is a first down with the yardage on the play. But a reprieve for FIU defensively there. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. This is the game of football. It is physical. And with Burt able to walk off under his own power, it was a good football play. Play fake on first down. And heaving a deep shot near sideline, and it hits the back of Blades. It's incomplete. And they were trying to find Jimmy Holiday down the field. Took, that was the very first shot of the, of the day. Over 20-yard pass there, and they took a, took a shot here on Blade. And... One thing I would love to see corners do more is turn around for the ball because these quarterbacks will always throw the ball if they see the, f the defender not looking. Now they know they can just throw it behind them, and the receiver is the only one that can catch it. A couple breaks today for FIU. One off the helmet of Potts earlier. That time, Blades gets the pass breakup and hadn't turned to the football. Elijah Young is swerved down here. Yep, well, playing, is playing with as much vision as possible increases your chances to be able to get your hands on the ball. That's one of the major reasons for zone coverage and how you have all defenders in the back end watching the quarterback and being able to see where the ball goes rather than being in man-to-man -man right. trailing, your, trailing your, your opponent. Steve Shannon had that last tackle, third and seven for Western Kentucky. Panthers rush four, right across the middle, complete. Point Dexter spins and bounces off another tackle. Out across midfield, Davion Irvin Point Dexter moves the chains for the Hilltoppers. Small check down was able to give the ball to Point Dexter, a playmaker, put it in his hands, and he does the rest, breaking two tackles and gaining a first down. Hilltoppers with tempo out to the far side. Dalvin Smith churning the legs close to a first down yardage. How impressive has the incorporation of the running backs in the receiving game been here early? It's been phenomenal thus far. Being able to give the ball to these running backs because that can not only run but actually catch reminds me of Christian McCaffrey. Right. And, and uh, Alvin Kamara with the Saints. These players and these new generations of running backs are able to do more, a lot more than just run the ball. Three receptions for 26 yards for the Western Kentucky tailbacks here in the first quarter with just over a minute to play. Reed will fake it to Irvin Point Dexter. Slings it far side. Holiday brings it in. Turning upfield. Jimmy Holiday touchdown Western Kentucky. 39 yards. It's 13 nothing. Holiday was able to find a weakness in the defense one on one with Donovan Manuel. He wasn't able to keep up with him, picking him up in the zone as he just found a void area was able to make the catch, go upfield for a pretty easy touchdown. It's 13-0. Second touchdown of the season for Jimmy Holiday. Eight plays, 73 yards, just under three minutes on that drive for the Hilltoppers. Carnell, 
Carnero out for the PAT. With Willie Taggart Jr. on the hold. And that took him a second to make the <laughs> decision there. No good. A little confusion here as we head to the break. Figure it out. 13 nothing Western Kentucky under a minute to play here first quarter. Fools. Okay, welcome back to Miami. AJ Ricketts, Jonathan Cyprian, 14 nothing Western Kentucky. We'll, we're going we're to take a second look at it, that in just a second here. As Ross Fournay is going to take this out of the end zone for FIU. And he gets blasted right around the 15. So FIU will start about 10 yards back, and they would have with a touchback. Second look, and it was, it was certainly a line drive. Carnero seemed to think without you know, there was no issue on that. And the officials looked at each other, and, and there was immediate hesitation <laughs> there on the field. But we're, So we have a reviewed PAT overturned here in the first quarter. Just one, of, just one of those final game of the season things, I guess. Which is something I've never seen before. But if you look at the replay, the ball did go pretty quickly and was so quick, pass right past the official's eyes. It, it wasn't the cleanest kick from Carnero, but it was good enough to score the point. Eric Rivers on the sweep. Isn't going to find a lot of open space here. He's brought down around the 18-yard line. Rivers a transfer into the program for a season with FIU. Well defended by the Western Kentucky defense perimeter there. Rivers transferred in from Chattanooga. Under 30 seconds here to play first quarter. Tough time for this FIU offense. Just 28 yards. Play fake. Blitz coming. Just had to get the throw off, and it was nearly intercepted. Dangerous throw from Kiwan Jenkins, who was just trying to avoid the sack, and Anthony Johnson Jr. nearly had his fourth pick of the season. This time, the FIU offense caught the Western Kentucky defense in man-to-man. -man. And you know that because with the motion, a defender followed him across the field. Putting the play or calling a play with it being a screen there, being man-to-man -man is more often than not the worst time to be in it because someone can hug up that running back right now. Third down. Jenkins across the middle, broken up, but a flag. Mitchell was clamoring for one, and Anthony Johnson may have gotten too much of the body there. Look, he looked like he got there just a little bit early, making a little bit of contact, and then as the ball got there, he was breaking it up. Good call by the official. Johnson leads Western Kentucky with three interceptions on the season, including the game ceiling. Defense, number 15. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic, first down. Including the game ceiling pick. Correction, the Lottet. foul was on number four. Yeah, they were saying, they said originally that was on Aaron Key, but they corrected themselves to Anthony Johnson. First down. So seven seconds left here in the first quarter. And Jenkins goes down. This might be a scoop and score here. Upton Stout, 20 to nothing. Now that is not how the offensive play had to have been drawn up. Defender for Western Kentucky literally comes clear off the right side of the defense in a blitz and pretty much hits the quarterback as he's doing the play action. Doesn't even lift the ball up to have the option to throw the ball. That was clear miscommunication on the offensive line. What a call there defensively on that corner blitz, blowing things up. Jenkins had no idea. Upton Stout with that recovery and taking it back to the end zone. What a way to end the corner quarter for Western Kentucky. Kendrick Simpson. <laughs> That's the end with the of sack, the first up and stout the score, Western the lead. One of those nightmare 
seven first quarters for FIU here at home. Third straight home game. It's 21 to nothing. And after a quarter of play, Corey Munson sends it deep. And this will be out for a touchback. Hendrick Simpkins forced the fumble. Upton Stout did the rest. Uh, this is a Western Kentucky team that, that has prided itself on its defense this season. Dyson Helton, they knew from the start of this year that, that would be a, a phase of their football team that, that would win them some games, and it's certainly made an impact here early. The Western, the Western Kentucky defense, starting from the zone and the man-to-man -man coverage, and then mixing in Zone pressures, man-to-man -man blitzes, corner blitzes. They're doing a lot. Wildcat look here. As John Owens trying to get a couple yards here. That worked a couple times at Arkansas last week. Doesn't go for much there. It's been a two-headed monster all season when it comes to the running backs and Shamari Lawrence and Key, Key John Owens. Well, it was Antonio Patterson, who was the second string tailback to start the year. Then Owens had a monster game against North Texas and really assumed the second string role after that. Nice catch here by Dean Patterson across the middle of the fields for a first down. That's a positive for the FIU offense, getting a completion now after only having 14 yards total before that completion. It's just got to be difficult to try to continue to play the offensive rhythm you want to. And just like that, you're, you're down three touchdowns at home. It's be easy to try to force the issue as Owens scrambles to the near side, gets out past the 40 for a pair of yards. It's a lot harder to look at your next play to call when you're 21 zip. And it's hard, even harder to now try to keep the defensive coordinator and the defense on their toes on the run pass options, right? A lead like this makes, forces an offense to be one dimensional, which the defense can capitalize off with pressures and other things to get to the quarterback. So there's two rushing yards for FIU. Jenkins gonna fling it to Chris Mitchell near sideline. He gets around the 40 before being brought down. Chris Mitchell on that motion, nobody went with him. The offense being in zone and him being able to get to the flat where there was a void and no defender was there. He was able to take advantage of that. Great job on just catching the ball and getting upfield. Western Kentucky has now outscored opponents in the first quarter of this regular season. 131 Western Kentucky. to 38. Their first. 30 seconds. And Hilltoppers will take a 30 second timeout here. Mitchell now two receptions for 24 yards as he continues to close in on T.Y. Hilton's single season record. This is all Western Kentucky right now, the, exactly the kind of start they want to hear on the road and want to really give FIU any belief to start things off here in Miami on senior day. You never quite know how a, a game script will unfold on a, the final game of a regular season, but right now, Western, uh, if you combine last year's game and the first quarter of this, in the past five quarters, Western Kentucky's outscored FIU 94 to nothing. You know, I go back to when I was just a senior at FIU and going back to my senior day, it was a real a game that I definitely wanted to perform and check every box that I had left. Up on that in a second here as on first down. Jenkins trying to avoid a sack. Might just get back to the line of scrimmage and set up a second and ten. Who was, uh, who was that game against? What was so that situation? I believe it was versus FAU. Okay. And a quick story as we speak about Chris Mitchell potentially beating T.Y. Hilton for the single season yardage record. I saw T.Y. his senior year do something remarkable versus FAU last time on his senior night. And I just knew when it was my turn, I had to do the same. Right. Hilton, one of the most decorated players to come through South Florida here at FIU. And as Dean Patterson extends to make the catch here. Set up a more manageable third down. The sun shower continues here in Miami. Now 
That was back in the, the Sun Belt days for FIU. Of course, FAU now on to the American. And the conference realignment and reshuffling has been a constant over the past 10 plus years. Third down and five. Jenkins can take a home run shot far side. Mitchell does a great job to adjust his body and make the catch down the far sideline. That's a first down for FIU as Chris Mitchell has another big play. That's three catches for 24 yards for Chris Mitchell right now with the goal of just over 70 to be able to beat that record held by T.Y. Hilton. Oh, decent coverage from Davion Williams. Mitchell adjusting to the football. Timeout, FIU, they're first. Media timeout. FIU will call a timeout. And so we'll take one as well with 11.08 to play. Please reset the, the game half. clock. 21 nothing. Western Kentucky, Panthers seconds. threatening. Kentucky up 21 0. Four minutes here in the second quarter. Panthers with their first red zone trip on the afternoon. Mitchell, Chris Mitchell for FIU needs just 24 yards now to break that FIU single season all time mark. FIU trying to make this a two possession game. Jenkins will keep it. Has Rocky Beers as a blocker. Made the first man miss and able to dive forward to about the three-yard line. Jenkins already has the FIU single-season record for rushing touchdowns by a quarterback in a campaign to surpass Alex Magoo's mark in that department with a rushing touchdown last week. Last week was the first game this season that Jenkins threw for a touchdown and FIU lost. They had been 4-0 on the year. This is a, a must-have for FIU right now. Second and goal at the three. Owens the tailback. Jenkins will loft it. Rocky Beers holds on. Touchdown, FIU. Beers, end zone. That was great placement of the ball by Kiwan Jenkins, knowing that he has a big tight end to be able to go up and get the ball. It's just in the air like a basketball rebound. Tight ends are mainly and mostly compared to those basketball players, and that's exactly how we use them there. First touchdown of the FIU career for Rocky Beers. And the PAT is good. So FIU trying to settle things down, cut into this deficit. Makes it 21 to seven. We'll take a break. 10.28 to play here in Miami. Nine plays, 75 yards and four and a half minutes on that last drive for FIU to chip into the deficit and make it a 21-7 game here in Miami. Glad to have you with us on ESPN Plus. Look as Matias boots it away. This will be a touchback. Much better looking offensive possession there for FIU partner. What adjustments did you see make as FIU had a nice sustained drive of their own? Well, Kiwan Jenkins was able to make plays with the ball as the quarterback. It was better protection, and he was able to deliver the ball down the field, um, take what the defense was able to give them, and was able to find Chris Mitchell, his number one receiver, a few times on this drive. Uh, Combined with that and a few rushing uh, rushing attacks by their their running backs, they were able to get in the end zone. Malachi Corley has tied Taiwan Taylor for the most receptions in a single season at Western Kentucky. And it's six yards here on first down. So speaking of Taiwan Taylor, he was once a teammate of mine for the Tennessee Titans where he was drafted to. 
leaving Western Kentucky. Made his mark in Bowling Green before advancing to the NFL, and that actually was the record right there on the toss play to Corley as they go to River Helms here on the far side. Christian can't make the tackle. Helms still going across midfield and into plus territory. That's a great catch and run by a big tight end to be able to uh, get downfield, use his speed, and elude a few tackles. So we spoke about C.J. Christian and how great he's been this year for them when he's been healthy. Uh, this is a great drive by Western Kentucky right now. Marquis Steph with that handoff for a couple of yards. So a salute to Malachi Corley, who now has the Western Kentucky all-time single-season receptions record with 200 or all-time record, I should say, not single season, all-time Western Kentucky record, 254. Five catches here today, just broke Taylor's record. I have to, I have to let him know that his record has just been broken. <laughs> and and you're, you're about to get passed for fifth all-time by uh, Donovan Manuel with, with his next tackle <laughs> for the all-time list in FIU history. Reed on the wheel routes. Peterson in coverage, Irvin Point Dexter couldn't haul it in. Well, you know, records are meant to be broken. Of course, of course. And you just hope that when they're broken, your team is doing well enough for you to look back and see that if records are being broken, more often than not, the team is doing well. But I have to say, he has more records to break to beat me. <laughs> <laughs> you've got the you've got the career list. Manuel's only been here for two years, though. <laughs> I don't make the rules. <laughs> you might have had a leg up in that department. <laughs> Reed handoff straight up the gutter. Irvin Poindexter might have got a first down there. Irvin Poindexter has been running phenomenally today, not only with running the ball but catching the ball out of the backfield. Um, he's very shifty and elusive. And I love that he goes vertical with the moves that he makes, not really running side to side. It's going to be fourth down in about a half yard. Western Kentucky keeping the offense on the field here. Reed will start out of the gun on the 36. High snap, handoff. Ran into a bit of a wall at first, but the second effort got him across. It'll be a first down as Irvin Poindexter running hard. Had a decent roll in Indiana, scored a touchdown in 2021 20, with the Hoosiers, but wanted a bit more to his plate. Made the decision to transfer to Western Kentucky. I mean, three, three of their four running backs that are in the rotation are power five transfers. Reed, five-step drop. Deep shot, far sideline. Corley going up. What a catch. Western Kentucky in the red zone. That was a great catch for him to be able to go and get that ball at its highest point one-on-one -on -one with C.J. Christian. Hey, and right here, Austin Reed is throwing it to his guy. I mean, what else can you ask for? Throwing up there with uh, Corley being outside with the definite size advantage. That's a matchup that Austin Reed will take, I think, 10 times out of 10. Corley's always been a little underlooked. That should hopefully change with the success he's had at Western Kentucky. He was listed as a cornerback by most recruiting websites despite his high school success. He said, that still kind of makes me mad to this day. He said he didn't go to any camps as a corner, never really put his name down as one. So when he was listed at that, as that put a chip on his shoulder early Heading into his career at Western Kentucky. End around. Easton Messer inside the five. Messer to the goal line. Touchdown, Western Kentucky. Quick response. And it's back to a three possession lead. Messer is no stranger with the ball in his hands. He takes back kick returns and I think serves with punt returns. Him able to get this in and around, outnumbered, out the gate and out leverage was able to break a tackle and end in the end zone for a great gain. 
and another touchdown. That's 20, that's 27 points. Western Kentucky has found the end zone on four of its five possessions to start this game. Total yards of 229 compared to FIU's 89 yards total for the game thus far. It has been a one-sided affair through a quarter plus of play. PAT from Carnero is good. 28-7, another clinical drive from Western Kentucky. Still top her offense pro. 28-7, Western Kentucky. Up three scores after nine plays, 75-yard drive. Three and a half minutes off the clock. Ross Fournay lets this sail into the end zone. Austin Reed now 17 for 25, 198 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. There was a bit of a conversation before this game if Reed would get the start. We alluded to he's been banged up over the course of the weeks, had some shoulder issues. Was talking with some around the Western Kentucky program before the game. He said, uh, you know, Caden Veltkamp may be an option to start here today, despite the fact he hadn't thrown a pass this season, but it's been Austin Reed, and he looks just fine out there, partner. Just fine, attacking on all cylinders and moving this offense forward. Empty backfield, Jenkins, quick throw. Dean Patterson tries to pivot quickly and get a couple extra yards. Or Jalen Bracey, I beg your pardon. Third catch for Bracey here today. Just 93 yards of offense for FIU. Eight rushing yards total. Uncharacteristic in the rushing yards aspect of it. Let's see if they can put the right plays together, it being second and five now, for them to be able to get down the field as they get into that wishbone formation where they can usually turn this into a um, run play. Full house in the backfield here. Jenkins will hand off. Kijan Owens, not much there to work with. Just got a yard on the play. We'll set up third and four. That wishbone formation hasn't been so effective for them thus far. I wonder how long they're going to stand behind it as far as trying to move the ball offensively when it comes to running the ball there. Funny you incorporated the Wildcat last week for really the first time this season. That was a new wrinkle offensive coordinator David Yost introduced to a bit of success. We've seen it just one time here today so far. Third and four. And man Rivers man. motions. Jenkins facing pressure. Gets it off near side. Rivers makes the catch. Brought down at the 33, he's going to be short of the sticks by two yards. That being man-to-man -man there, Bracey was able to motion and then come back out as Kiwan Jenkins was able to deliver the ball to him. That was unfortunate because you were able to catch the defense in the man-to-man -man that was anticipated, not the zone, and still unable to come up short of the first down. Does Rivers just have to run a better route there towards the sticks, or are you fine with that? Uh, well, you know, they practice it for it to be a certain yardage, and a lot of the times the quarterbacks want to be able to put it where they've practiced. Sure. It's up to the receiver to get there. 28-7, our score. First and 10, Western Kentucky brought down at the 20. Welcome back here at Conference USA on ESPN+. Plus. Having some communication issues here uh, leading us back from the timeout here early. Apologize for that 28-7, our score. 4.30 left to play here in the first half. A.J. Ricketts, Jonathan Cyprian, Austin Reed, business as usual. Approaching 200 yards. On second down, Reed into the flat. It's Elijah Young. Not going to get much. Maybe back to the original line of scrimmage and a third and long upcoming here for Western. Defense is stepping up right now, setting the edge on the perimeter as they try to get Young outside in space. Defensive backs and linebackers converge to make a great tackle. It's, it's third and long now, and this is what a defense always wants to have in offense. Well, third down hasn't been a problem for Western Kentucky today. Five for seven. The 
This is the longest third down they face today. Empty backfield, Reed fires a fastball far sideline. Craig Burt Jr. in the area cannot make the play, so it's a three and outs for the FIU defense. With that empty formation, Austin Reed just was a little bit off target when throwing the ball to Burt as Burt got to the sticks to be able to anticipate the ball coming to him there. Reed was able to deliver that about one yard short of the sticks. There were just some miscommunication there in that empty formation. Patterson to return for FIU. FIU brought the house there. A great punt forces Patterson to take this on the run near his own 20, trying to get some of that back. It's 12 yards on the return. Terrific punt though. That will send us to a media timeout with 22 left. FIU's defense forces a three and out. Panthers with the football, 322 to play. First half, Jenkins lofting it, intercepted. Western Kentucky gets it right back. And it's a return of 18 yards the other way. Talik Allen. Snaring it away in Western Kentucky and business once more. Talik Allen. Talik Allen was able to get his head around right as the ball was leaving Jenkins' hand. And uh, as he did that, he was just use, able to use his length to be able to grab the ball and, uh, and return it for some yards. And it's WKU's football once again. Jenkins just underthrowing that as he was... Looking to find Rocky Beers down the seam. And Allen, who led the team in tackles, entering this game with 47 of them. Big play there. Now Western. Oh, trick play here. Wide open man down the seam. <laughs> Perfectly done. End zone again. It's Craig Burtz with the moves and the score. 34-7. This was just a great play in the area where we call the fringe. And with one of these plays where it's change of sudden change, the offense usually comes out with a shot to the, with, towards the end zone the very first play. They get the ball, and that's exactly what Western Kentucky did, finding a wide open wide receiver down the sideline. How about the touch on that pass from Dalvin Smith, partner? <laughs> hey, he must have some high school quarterback back in his day. Oh, PAT blocks. They're covered by Western, so they, they won't get that. So this, uh, this, this isn't new for Smith, though. He did this last year as well in the New Orleans Bowl. He threw a touchdown against South Alabama for 25 yards on a trick play. So this is, this is par for the course towards the end of the season. For David Smith, that time, 32 yards on the trick play. And you know, when receivers, running backs, whomever throws a touchdown who isn't a quarterback for the team, whenever they get, they get the ball behind the line of scrimmage, alarms have to start to buzz, you know, and, and start to go off in your head to know that, hey, let me go slow until I know and you only could know that by watching enough film and being coached. Hey, how difficult is that, though, as a DB? I mean, your muscle memory, you're, you're, not, you're not expecting Dalvin Smith <laughs> to square up and throw, and throw towards the end zone there if you're in the secondary. You're not. You're not. But you have a job to do, and I'm sure you're, if your third is your responsibility, it's recognizing from deep to short. What a back-breaking sequence for FIU. And they're trying to drive down the field, make it a two-possession game, knowing they'll get the, the ball out of the locker room as well. And instead, one play, interception. The next play, trick play, touchdown. I mean, it's tough. It's tough. And we need answers for this offense to be able to move forward. Jackson McDonald in as the tight end. They'll go near side to Rocky Beers on this 12 personnel look. Five yards on first down. As Beers is starting to play a bigger role in the receiving game towards the end of the regular season here. 
becoming more reliable and being able to capitalize on his opportunities. Great size to help on the offensive line when it comes to blocking. And Josiah Miaman had a nice game last week in, in the run block for FI. You haven't seen much of Miaman today. Safety blitz here. It's a handoff. Jamari Lawrence will get about three or four more yards. Yeah, there were question marks at that tight end spot for FIU after their, one of their top offensive players, Rivaldo Fairweather, transferred to Auburn this past offseason and ended up having a pretty good year for the Tigers. Interesting, you know, the, well, Fairweather playing for FIU last year was part of a team that beat New Mexico State on the road, <laughs> transfers to Auburn, and he sees that same New Mexico State team, and they, they picked up a huge win in the Plains the, the, other, the other week. Oh, man, I've been seeing Rivaldo has been contributing to that yeah, team. He's been having a nice year. Their success for sure. Third down and one. Jenkins gives off, diving for the first down is Shamari Lawrence. Got nearly three yards on the play. A minute 42 to go here in the first half. That's a first down there. Being able to grab that on the ground. Let's see how they'll be able to translate that going forward with just a minute and a minute and a half left on the clock before halftime. I find you has two timeouts to operate with. They fake it to Lawrence on the run. Beers gets blown up. Upton Stout read that and forces an incompletion. And they are glad to have Upton Stout. Back in the lineup after missing a couple games with a collarbone injury. It forces the incompletion from the FIU tight end. And that pass was better off an incompletion than caught, to be honest with you, as I think it would have been for a loss rather than a game. And, and this is a drive FIU needs to play aggressively if they're going to have really any shot in this game. Motioning to empty now. Let's see if they can find a, a target. Five wide, Jenkins being harassed, will tuck it and scoot to the sideline to save some time. Set up a decent third down distance here for the Panthers. And that's interesting, on that, on that em empty route progression, I saw all intermediate routes where no receiver really ran beyond five to six yards. I'd like to see in an empty, at least one person get a couple of the defenders to go with and cover a deep defender to open up the underneath routes. Here we're in empty again, one-on-one, -on -one, Chris Mitchell. Let's watch outside, see if he. Western bringing the house near side. Mitchell, nearly a one-handed catch. Just slipped out. Yep, go straight to Chris Mitchell there. And a lot of times the wide receiver will look to see if the defender is pre in press coverage or off coverage. Off coverage, they'll run a hitch. Press coverage, they run a go route. The zero ward in coverage there that time. And that's interesting there. West, Western Kentucky taking a timeout. I mean, the clock was stopped with the incompletion. So you would think they'd want to have that second timeout for this Final drive with about a minute left, but maybe sensing an FIU fake, perhaps want to make sure that they have things set up defensively. That would be correct. Would I would see the special teams being prepared for anything right now, or maybe going after the punt. Kiwan Jenkins first half stat line for the Panthers: 12 for 18. 93 yards, one touchdown, one interception, just 114 total yards of offense for FIU. Montiel will indeed send it away. Fair catch called for by Hutchinson at the 22. So some time certainly to work with. 59 seconds in a timeout in the Nation's leading passer from last year in Austin Reed. It's an offense well designed for these situations. 
with uh, with such a lead and just under a minute going into halftime, let's see what the offense does. Do they take it to the air and take their chances to put some more points on the board? Or do they run the ball and just run into halftime? We've got Irvin Poindexter as the tailback. With this alignment, it looks like they're going <laughs> to go vertical. Read on first down. They'll step forward and just play it safe there as since pressure coming, the Panthers get a sack. Alex Nobles was right there to finish off the play. And now Western Kentucky in no hurry. Last thing you want to do is have Reed take a shot. Take a hit, I should say. Less than 30 seconds left now. Two by two formation. I see them run the ball and get out of here. A little bit of Messer on the screen pass. Got by his first man and a little extra yardage before running out of play is Messer. There are flags on the far sideline. See if this is a hold. And throwing the ball short as a screen is another way of running the ball, right? Throwing it behind the line of scrimmage and counting on those athletes outside to be able to break tackles in space and run for yards, equivalent to running the ball with the running back. And it looks like it was. Yeah, it was a hold there. It was a hold there. Back it up. One of the few mistakes that has gone against Western Kentucky here in the first half. Very impressive first two quarters. They'll keep it on the ground and step will get out across the 20. And that will do it here for the first half as Reed immediately sprints towards the locker room. A dominating first two quarters from Western Kentucky. 34 to seven here on the road in Miami over FIU as they head into the locker room. Time here coming up on ESPN Plus. FIU trying to figure some things out here in South Florida. Just about set to start the second half here in Miami. 34 7 Western Kentucky dominating first two quarters. Let's we'll uh, continue that here in the second half. We're out to what will be Another bowl game under Coach Tyson Helton since he returned. Of course, was the former offensive coordinator in Bowling Green when Jeff Brom was leading the way. He was now at Louisville. He's guided the Cardinals to a terrific season. An ACC championship game appearance coming up. Helton, of course, spent some time out west. Southern Cal, Jeremy Pruitt at Tennessee, and now leading the way. And Western Kentucky, another bowl game in store. 34 to seven FIU to start with the football here in half number two. And if you're in this situation, look, you've lost three straight games. The second half of the season hasn't gone how you wanted. You're down big in this game. Just what, what's the mentality as you take the field here to start quarter number three for FIU? The mentality is coming out of that locker room after halftime, this drive is literally the most important one. What they do here can determine what the rest of this half is going to look like. And hopefully it's good, given it being senior night. Wildcat look. This time Shamari Lawrence is going to be the one to take it. Ran over his the first DB to meet him. Hard running from Lawrence to try to set the tone out of the locker room. He went for 100-plus yards in that opening game of the season at La Tech, in which FIU was... Very competitive, came out on the wrong side of before that three and one start to this season. Since going three and one, the Panthers have won just one game at Sam Houston State. Empty backfield, Jenkins, bit high. Rivers able to haul it in across the 30 yard line, immediately met, set up a third and short. And it was 
It's been an interesting dichotomy of emotions for FIU fans this year. They start three and one, and the conversation is maybe, hey, maybe we're ahead of schedule here right now. When Coach McIntyre's taken over Colorado and San Jose State, he took them from bare bones to the, the great heights that he did there. It, it all happened in year three. I think early on here in year two, FIU thought maybe you're ahead of schedule, but it's been tough sledding for injuries and a, a number of reasons, particularly on the offensive line. It's been a tough go over the last two months. Well, you know, it does take some time, as you said, given this transfer portal and along with recruiting kids out of high school, it actually should accelerate that process. But then again, every place is different. Every team is different. And this, these teams that we see today will be totally different come next year as seniors will graduate and people will transfer out, people will transfer in. One person FIU undoubtedly hopes to have back is, is Chris Mitchell, who still has eligibility. He's one of three players who's still with the program from when uh, Butch Davis and that staff was recruiting. He came in in the 2019 season. Mitchell still has eligibility. He was talking about it during the press conference this week as Jenkins lofted up high far sideline. Mitchell, did he make the catch? He did. Will that be enough for the record there? It's 24 yards here in the second half. We'll see what that wound up at. It seems like that might have broken the record as he just needed 24 yards. Let's see. But this is a great catch one-on-one. -on -one with the defender, and Kiwan Jenkins was definitely able to throw that Time ball out, out there and give his number one guy a yeah. chance. 29 yards, and that catch will do it for Chris Mitchell, breaking Tyrese Chambers' all-time single-season yards record. And you can see him on the left side of the screen, his teammates embracing and congratulating him there. And funny enough, as we take some time for injury on the field, Tyrese Chambers transferred out of FIU to go to Maryland, which really gave Chris Mitchell the opportunity to become the number one wide receiver here. And with that, he just took full advantage of doing so, of not only being the player that the team needed him to be, but exceeding expectations and becoming the all-time single season leading yards receiver in FIU history. That's pretty cool. And you'll hear Mike McIntyre rave about him all the time. You know, Mitchell, I was talking with him earlier this season. I, I feel it's becoming more and more rare to see a story like Mitchell. He barely played when he got here in FIU. He had to wait his turn as Jenkins will hand off here on first and 10. Shamari Lawrence trying to fall the right side of his line. Gets two yards. And then you had the, the turnover in coaching when Butch Davis was let go. And so you, you have a situation you're not playing. You're, you're not a part of the, 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 two, the two deep. You have a new coaching staff come in. Real easy to hit the portal, try to find a different situation. But he, he kind of reengaged himself here at FIU. He said a big reason why was the, the passing of his former receivers coach, Aubrey Hill, who is a South Florida coaching icon, passed from cancer a couple of years ago as this one out of the reach of Jalen Bracey. Uh, that was very emotional for him. That was very meaningful for him to, to stick this out and, and try to make it work here at FIU. And yeah, you said it, Chambers left the program, went to Maryland. Chris Mitchell last season, 348 yards, four touchdowns, finally starting to become a bit more than a role player here on campus. But this has been the huge breakout season for Mitchell on a national scale. Came into this game 12th in the country in receiving yards. As Bracey this time able to take it, got it in the chest, making some moves. Jalen Bracey scampering towards the end zone inside the 10. Nice yardage after the catch there from Jalen Bracey. And FIU in the red zone. Bracey able to show what he can do as a ball carrier when he has it in his hands. I mean, him at being able to get this ball break a tackle, and then change directions. Very strong run by Jalen, and uh, he's going to have a bright future ahead of him. The Panthers will have first and goal at the eight-yard line. Jenkins with the pocket. Now will step forward and get tripped up around the five. Back to that point on, on Mitchell. He said during the press conference this week, it, it seemed to be 
will be evaluating whether to enter the NFL draft or come back to FIU. Those see, he seemed to imply those were the two options. Mike McIntyre was pretty straightforward. said, look, we know Chris Mitchell better than anybody. We know, hey, we can get him the football here. We know what he does well. We know how to scheme for him. He's not going to be able to <laughs> have this kind of role in a lot of other places than here. He said, we love him. We'd love to have him back. Um, decisions certainly to be made. It'll be interesting what Chris Mitchell does decide to do. Now a Wildcat look as Jenkins goes out to the far sideline. Panthers not going to be able to move it much here on the direct snap to Lawrence. Lawrence will set up third down. And it's interesting, too, because Chambers left, went to Maryland, didn't really play a huge role there, ended up leaving the program with a couple of games to go. You wonder if that kind of factors into Mitchell's decision at all of this former teammate's role when he transferred to a Power 5 program. But it'll be one of the big storylines of FIU's offseason. Yeah, with that, with that departure of Tyrese Chambers, I believe he had anything from 10 to 20 snaps for the entire season yeah. and one touchdown. So um, it's definitely going to be something to be able to weigh out as far as do you stay, do you go. Third and goal here to the far side. Rivers made a man miss. Touchdown, Panthers. Eric Rivers. First score of his FIU career, and FIU starts the second half with a touchdown drive. Now that's a great way for the Panthers to respond. Coming out of the half, the time of possession was outstanding as they were able to take time off of the clock and most importantly, get this ball into the end zone. Hey, Talik Allen. Miss right by the goal line. Rivers did the rest. Gabriel out for the PAT. Missed one last week. No problem there. The Panthers make it a three possession game. 34 14, 9 27 to play third quarter in Miami. Thirty-four fourteen with 9 27 to play third quarter. USA football here on ESPN Plus. AJ Ricketts, Jonathan Cipri, and that was uh, Lucas Matias with the PAT after that last touchdown, handling kickoff and extra point duties today. As Chase Gabriel batting a little leg tightness, and he'll earn a touchback here, does Matias. So nice drive there by the Panthers. 10 plays, 75 yards, 533 time of possession on that drive. Chris Mitchell breaking the record, and Eric Rivers getting the touchdown. Second touchdown today for the FIU Panthers. And they're well on their way to starting this second half the proper way. Like I said, coming out of halftime, that first drive is the very most important drive to set the tempo of what you're going to do going forward. So hopefully that gives the confidence FIU Panthers need offensively. First play for Western Kentucky the second half. Elijah Young doesn't get too much. And if I know this FIU team, they find themselves in a bit of momentum, momentum type of team, right? So once the offense scores, the defense gets more mo motivated, motivated, the special teams make a play. So let's see how things can turn and how they can roll off the momentum of that last touchdown. This Western Kentucky offense can quickly zap a lot of that kind of momentum. They go into the flat here. Irvin Poindexter, nowhere to go. Closed down quickly by Reggie Peterson. It's a big tackle for loss, and FIU trying to get a three and out here. Reggie Peterson with a great tackle for loss. As the back's been doing well coming out of the backfield, catching the ball. And those linebackers of FIU being the focal point of the defense, where they have been making the most plays this season started with Donovan Mitchell. Third and a mile, Reed with the pocket, will sling it around the middle, it's caught, and it's a first down for Western Kentucky. What a throw there, and Dalvin Smith hauls it in. The ball is right on the line, a dime. We call that an all goal special. Three wide receivers trips. Uh, one receiver goes across the field. One goes through the seam and another one down the sideline. And the quarterback takes takes their pick depending on which 
receiver is open. Yeah, Peterson was playing up, trying to watch the check down to Irvin Poindexter. And Reed saw that. No problem. Thrown right over the mm. FIU linebacker. So they got 18 yards, needed 17. Reed will hand off. LT Sanders whipped to the ground here. First carry for Sanders today, the sophomore from Gardendale, Alabama. 143 yards on the season. So it's a rotation that can go four deep for Western Kentucky. Irvin Point Dexter from Indiana, Elijah Young transferred in from Mizzou, Marquis Stepp, Nebraska. LT Sanders, the only one of those four to come in as an underclassman. Tyson Helton talked about it, said, look, I, I look at the portals like NFL free agency. He's trying to embrace it as Elijah Young this time to carry for a couple of yards. Peterson on the tackle, third and 10. Was the Kentucky finding themselves in another third and long as the FIU defense was able to have a couple tackle for losses? Pretty sure this offense will go into the air as they're in this two by two double formation. The motion, see with the defense is in zone. A little shovel pass, and that's not gonna fool FIU. Reggie Peterson in on the tackle along with Jordan Garrod, who's somewhat slow to get up along the line. Not able to get up on his own power. And the Panthers will force a punt. Another tackle for Reggie Peterson. Great tackle, because if he missed that one, it was out the gate. Peterson, a former walk-on, and has since earned a scholarship and been one of the starting linebackers this season here for FIU. Corey Munson to punt, had a 57-yard punt earlier today. Tom Ellard has missed the last couple of games, and whistles blow here before that punt, which was another booming kick. False start, offense, number 31. Five-yard penalty. False start, Four moving fifth. back. Yeah, Tom Ellard punted most of the season. A redshirt sophomore from Australia was averaging 41 yards per punt. Munson was averaging about 37 in the two games since he started punting. But he's looked good here today in the few rare times he's had to take the field. They must be playing some good football in Australia. Yeah, that's, that's where you go for kickers now, yeah? Yeah. Pro kick. The best punter in the, in the NFL now, played for the San Francisco 49ers from Australia, one of my teammates. Fair catch from Patterson at the 31. We'll take a break here. 526 to play third quarter. FIU continuing to try to chip into this deficit. College football here on ESPN Plus. 34-14 in Western Kentucky. Leads FIU, A.J. Ricketts, Jonathan Cypriot. Panthers coming off a touchdown drive. They find Beers for a gain of seven. They love to get Beers involved. Getting K1 Jenkins outside of the pocket, rolling out what he loves to do, move, and get the ball delivered to his really favorite target in the flats there. Beers already has a touchdown today. Five minutes left here in the third quarter. So get somewhat interesting here if the Panthers able to drive down the field again, put it in the end zone. Here's a nice give. Kijon Owens running hard towards the 45 yard line. The Panthers are no stranger to the second half comeback story. So let's hope we can see that to make this game a little bit more interesting for both sides. Right, McIntyre's getting great effort out of his team here in the third quarter. After going into the locker room trailing big. A bit of a rhythm now for this FIU offense. Jenkins on the play fake. Will hit his check down and Bracey who has some space out in front of him. Bracey across midfield and shoved out of play. And the Panthers will move the chains once again. A lot of mutual respect between Mike McIntyre and Tyson Helton on the other sideline. Both come from football families. McIntyre was born in Miami. His dad, George McIntyre, was the uh, quarterback at Miami for the 1959 season. And a scout for the Canes from 64 to 67. There's a Miami connection for... Tyson Helton's father as well, Kim Helton, who was the offensive coordinator for the Canes from 1979 to 1982 under Howard Schnellenberger. And as they figure out what the ruling is here on the, on the field, this flag. 
Well, it was cool for Tyson Helts. He got to play for his dad as well at Houston that 1996 season. When his dad was actually coaching the year touching. Conference USA. Offense. The player who caught the pass was covered up at the line of scrimmage and was eligible to catch a pass. The penalty is five yards, loss of down, second down. So that'll negate the big run there for Jalen Bracey. And move the Panthers back five yards. That was the second time that the Panthers were able to capitalize on a wide receiver motioning and catching the ball in that flat to be able to run downfield. Before, it was Chris, Chris Mitchell, and he was able to take it for about a 10 to 15 yard gain. Unfortunately, this time they were lined up incorrectly. Stout coming in from the edge, has to be careful here. Jenkins just got the throw off. And Stout nearly forced another fumble from the FIU true freshman quarterback. Those have been some well-timed calls defensively. Almost worked again there for Western Kentucky. Hey, these play-action passes and that wishbone formation is something that the Panthers definitely have to be cautious of. As the quarterback has his back turned, it's unable for him to elude that rush. Uh, going back to that cause force fumble touchdown earlier in the earlier in the game. Third and 15 now, empty backfield. Jenkins quickly to Chris Mitchell, and he's chopped down before the original line of scrimmage. I almost wonder with the quick out route like that, if FIU was just trying to get about seven or eight yards and make it a manageable fourth down. It's going to be fourth and 11. They have to punt here. Motioning out to empty, that would be about the third time now where with that motion came a quick pass. Jane Montiel sends it away. No fair catch here. Hutchinson uh, trying to get some yardage back, and he makes his way to nearly the 35-yard line. Good return from Hutchinson on the Montiel punt. 3-11 to play third quarter. Western Kentucky in control up by 20. 34-14 with 3-11 to play here in the third quarter. You had a chance to make it a two-possession game there, but penalties taking that drive backwards. Austin Reed and company back out again. Nice run up the middle, not for much. Marquis Step got a yard. The rushing attack for Western Kentucky is at literally 30 yards for the game, making the FIU defense doing very well versus that. But the passing out of the backfield, along with passing in general with Austin Reed, has been shooting them in the foot thus far. Western Kentucky didn't like something that they saw. We'll take a timeout. We'll look, look at, let's evaluate this partner from, from more of a macro perspective here. Nearly to the fourth quarter, 234 left to play here in the third. Uh, Western Kentucky out gaining FIU, 279 to 200, uh, 248 to 157 through the air. But you know, those are respectable numbers for the Panthers. You compare it to last season, the Hilltoppers had 688 yards of total offense. They really put up 700 at 478 passing yards, 210 rushing yards, averaged 9.6 yards per play. Uh, there's a scoop and score in this game. You take that out, which you, you can't. This is football. That's certainly part of it. But if, if you did take that, there's there's 28 points of offense for Western Kentucky. It'd be a 28-14 sort of a fair. It's been a much more respectable performance for the Panthers. Still not the standard they would like as this screen pass got to Sanders. He's taken down as he tried to spin forward. It still feels like a game Western Kentucky is thoroughly controlled. There have been some nice moments for FIU as they trying to work their way back, but it, it, there, you can still see the gap between the two teams. It does, it does, and make no mistake about it, there's a difference between last year and, and this year. There have been improvement, not the six-game bowl el eligibility sure. improvement that the Panthers would like to see, but like you said, partner, they're a lot better than last year's be, I mean, fight, especially versus this team in particular. Reed on third down. 
Plenty of time, now rolls right. Able to find River Helms right before he stepped out of play. Helms got a couple extra yards as well as tight end. Glad to see him back in the lineup. His Western Kentucky, and he gives the Hilltoppers a fresh set of downs. And that was something, you know, that's part of the, the first four games for FIU. What was so satisfying about it was that it came against teams that, that really beat up on the Panthers last year. North Texas, UConn, and FIU started 3-1. and one. Reed off the play action, evaded the sack, checks it into the flat marquee step. Does well to get about five or six yards. Now, Western Kentucky, that was the biggest gap. <laughs> that was the biggest loss in FIU history. They're trying to turn 73 nothing into a, a more respectable score, but it, it's still been Western Kentucky from the start here after they jumped out to a 21 nothing lead. Well, it's part of Coach Malarkey's plan to be able to create this team, this organization into a winning and competing team for the years to go forward. It was a plan for years to come, right? So this is year two of his plan and the university led by Scott Carr as the athletic director to be able to change the program of this football team on the winning sides of things. So as they continue to move forward in this year compared to last, let's see what they can be doing, what they can do ongoing. Panthers are coming off having the top recruiting class in Conference USA. Looks like Liberty's gonna take that spot this year. Reed, another third down, slant route caught. And some more yardage here. This could go for six. It's another touchdown, it's Hutchinson. Western Kentucky on third down makes it 40 to 14. Wow, Hutchinson was able to show his speed on that route, catch and run after catch. In the slot, being able to take a short pass one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, creating separation and just running towards the end zone. There was no chance of catching him as there was no safety help on that play. Yeah, they got Jamal Potts in one-on-one -on -one coverage there, and Katie Hutchinson is not losing that foot race. First touchdown of the season for Hutchinson, the Hamilton, Georgia native. Carnero's PAT is good. And five seconds to go in the third quarter. Western Kentucky back to a, already was a comfortable advantage, 20. Back to 27. A lot of long faces on that. FIU sideline. See the frustration from Mike McIntyre there. His team was trying to battle back here in the third quarter. It's been a really respectable third quarter for the Panthers. Seven to seven here in the third between the two teams. Felt like this team had a chance there to continue to whittle into it. And that is not what happened. We talked about what the decision that Chris Mitchell has, whether he's going to come back into the NFL draft. Malachi Corley still has eligibility for Western Kentucky, but he, he made it pretty clear last, last week after uh, Senior Day at the, at the Houch uh, went on Twitter. And, uh, I can't remember exactly what he, the tweet said verbatim, but something to the effect of, you know, blessed to be able to have this kind of performance in my last game at the Houch. I said that's a pretty clear indicator <laughs> of, what, of what his intentions are moving yeah. forward. Yeah, and that's, and that's just fine. That's just fine. Fournay lets this bounce in the end zone. I mean, what yeah. what Corley's been able to do the the last couple of years, and he's he's evoking you know, a lot of comparisons to uh, Debo Samuel with with his yards after the catch, his physicality, uh, you know, his profile, and, and, and what he, he's been able to do his last couple of years at, at Western Kentucky. And you know, he was he was talking about that. He said, "Look, he's fast, agile, runs people over. He isn't scared of contact." That's kind of what I've wanted to mold myself as a as a player here at Western Kentucky. That's you know Tyson Helton has designed sets with me in the backfield just like Debo Samuel was used at times. It's Jenkins. He's scrambling and will float it to the far sideline. Incomplete. And that'll lead us to the fourth quarter. 41-14, more on Corley in Western Kentucky when we return in control here on the road in Miami.
Start of the fourth quarter here in Miami, 41-14, Western Kentucky. Into the flats, incomplete on second and 10. This one certainly seems out of reach for the Panthers. Just going to try to end this on a high note. Uh, AJ Ricketts, Jonathan Cyprian, glad to have you with us on ESPN+. Plus. Third and 10 here for FIU. This being senior day, one thing I would want from the following cast is just to give it all you got. Near sideline, that might have been an interception. I think that was held on, and it is the second pick of the game for Western Kentucky. This time, Alex Ford hanging on to it. And Hilltoppers will have the football in FIU territory. So here we have Kewan Jenkins looking far to the left and throwing it up. Uh, Jalen Bracey doesn't look open whatsoever. And it makes me question on why was that the decision to throw it that way and not looking to the other side of the field. Yeah, it looked like Bracey had no idea that was coming his way. It was tightly covered as well. Mm -hmm. or maybe Bracey felt that he was held or tugged on. Definitely some some confusion on the pass catcher and key one. And, and for Western Kentucky, that might be it for Austin Reed today as Turner Helton will take the first snap of the fourth quarter for the Hilltoppers. Irvin Poindexter scampering forward close to first down yards. Turner Helton, redshirt freshman out of the state of California, five for five for 65 yards and a touchdown on the season. Western really hasn't played it's backup quarterback all too often this year. It's been read the full distance most every game this season. Well, with the majority of the fourth quarter of the play, we'll definitely see what he can do uh, following suit Austin Reed and what he was able to perform the first three quarters. Nelton. Good pitch and catch out to the 35. Jimmy Holiday, who had a touchdown earlier, brings this one in. So. Uh, Helton probably certainly looks at this as an audition of sorts. Look, Western Kentucky's built a brand at the quarterback position th through the years. Tyson Helton alluded to it, said, we take a lot of pride in it. And he said, I don't want to have a good quarterback. I want to have an elite quarterback in what we're trying to do. And whether it, through the years it's been Brandon Dowdy, Mike White, um, most recently Bailey Zappi, and all three of those names have NFL experience <laughs> to their name as well. Like, a lot of good QBs have been coming through Bowling Green. The direct snap here, Helton will get about a yard or two. And, and as a head coach, as a program, that will weigh heavily in the eyes of any potential recruit you're trying to get as an underclassman or through the portal. It's going to be very interesting to see where next year's signal caller for Western Kentucky comes from and if they may be on the roster right now or not. It speaks to the development of quarterbacks at that university. Yeah. And not only that, it speaks to the relationships that they have with NFL teams coming back here looking for quarterbacks specifically. So, yes, I can see players wanting to come here and be a quarterback for Western Kentucky. Elton will step up, keep it himself. Ooh, took a big lick at the end of that play from Peterson. Got about five or six yards. Now, those plays are always the hardest as a defender. So many times, quarterbacks or players give themselves up right before, <clears throat> right before they're about to have a hit. So leaving the defender really in a in a place where they can't really right. pull well, back. The, well, the play is technically dead when the slide starts. I almost you saw Helton kind of raise his hand as if alluding that might have been a late hit. So I'm almost surprised the flag didn't fly there on Peterson. Very tough for defenders yeah. in the game currently. Third down and three. Quarters coverage here by the Panthers. Vault camp near side, the signal caller this time. It's incomplete. So we saw Turner Helton come in for a play. That was Caden Vault camp, third string QB. First pass this year. Now Helton will come back in. Caden Vault camp. Won a state championship in high school in Bowling Green. Out of South Warren High School. 
dad is the strength coach at Western Kentucky. But now Helton back in on this fourth down in about three. Helton across the middle. Should be a first down. Marvin Sims with the catch. I mentioned the uh, family connection for Vault Camp. Helton, yep, that probably rings a bell. Tyson Helton is his uncle. Pops is Clay Helton. Georgia Southern head coach. He just comes to the near side for Easton Messer. Lost a yard. Jeremy Passamore with that tackle for loss. The standout defensive lineman for the Panthers this year. We got another. You know, her Helton back on the field. Hel Helton in uh, vault camp kind of alternating here on this drive. Second and 11, about four minutes into the fourth quarter. Panthers looking like they'll be bringing pressure and man-to-man -man on the outsides. And timeout will be called for. A little bit of confusion on the offense. They'll get it sorted out, 10.35 to play. Western Kentucky up big. Second and 11 after the timeout, 10.35 to play here in the regular season finale. Helton will hand off LT Sanders, spinning out of a couple of tackles, did well just to get a yard or two on that play. We'll still set up the third down and long. Former NFL defense back, Jonathan Cypriot. AJ Ricketts here with you in Miami. Forty-one, fourteen, Hilltoppers. Third down here for Turner Helton in this Western Kentucky offense. Hilltoppers in striking range here in the fringe. Helton facing pressure, and he'll be brought down in the backfield. Good rush from Jordan Garad earning the sack. been one of FIU's more standout defensive linemen over the course of this season. Had the initial pressure and just missed them and was able to come back and capitalize on that sack, knocking them out a little bit of that striking range to the end zone they were before. Now at the 29-yard line. Now Vault Camp will come in. Fourth down and 17. Vault Camp trying to evade Jack Daly. It will scamper towards the hashes. They fumble the football. Recovered towards the far sideline. FIU might have a scoop and score their own. Adrian Cole in his final home game. Touchdown, Panthers. That was a beautiful recovery scoop and score, outrunning the entire offense. I wonder to see, did the ball, did he hit the ground before the ball came out? But this quarterback tandem that they that the Hilltoppers have been doing, switching quarterbacks in and out, have been has has put them one running the ball, the other really throwing and handing the ball off. That was an amazing break for the Panthers there and the defense. The fifth forced fumble of the season for Donovan Manuel. And the PAT from Matias is good. 41-21 on the scoop and score from the Panthers. Welcome back to South Florida. 41-21 our score here in the fourth quarter.
A little pooch kick to the near side. Takes a bounce at the 30, and then Western Kentucky able to fall on top of it there as Panthers tried to surprise Western. So that was an 84-yard return for Adrian Cole after the Donovan Emanuel forced fumble. And partner, we, we were talking a bit of more, more big picture about you know where FIU is as a program compared to last year. Look, since the first quarter, the Panthers actually outscoring <laughs> Western Kentucky 21 to 20. But again, that's just not how it works in football. The, the whole first quarter thing that happened where Panthers found themselves down 21 to nothing. And that was the you know, third straight game. It's happened here in Miami this season. As Zeke Masses can't bring down Marquise Stepp, who's bowling over defenders. Great run for Stepp out to the 40-yard line. Yep, even broke a tackle from Donovan Manuel there on that, on that hard run. But, yeah, you're right. Coming out of the second half, the Panthers have been doing a lot better throughout the season than they have been doing on the first half of the game. And just in this time of the game, in this time, you have to be able to come out strong and maintain that throughout the game. Step another carry was a little off balance to start that run, but still got five yards. And that's part of what made last week's game at Arkansas, the, the first half at least, kind of eye popping was was taking that first quarter lead, 13 to to seven and really it could have been a one possession game late in the third quarter if chase gabriel hadn't missed the field goal in a pat it was 31 to 20. it was eye popping to see that that kind of fight and execution out of fiu and again in miami it's been such a problem to get off to a good start here you, you wonder how many teams in america have gone down 21 nothing in three straight games at home you know it's a mindset and a mentality that you have to condition yourself as a player and a coach to be able to find out what is that that makes your team tick? What is it right. that you need to do? Maybe even adjusting your practice schedule to make their sense of urgency on starting a game more productive than it has been. And that's going to be some learning the team, learning the p individual players uh, and the coaching staff to being able to implement what they find to translate on su on Saturdays. Right. Western certainly had that figured out today. Helton to the near side, Irvin Poindexter. A ton of blue jerseys around him. Fights hard for a first down. Poindexter out of the backfield once again, catching the ball and being dynamic with the ball in his hands. Well, you saw the resiliency on the flip side for Western Kentucky last week against Sam Houston State. There's not many teams that will turn it over five times in conference play and still find a way to win. That's exactly what they did. As FIU needs a moment for an injury timeout. So we'll take one here, too. 6.34 to play. Western Kentucky up by 20. Forty-one twenty-one after the injury timeouts. Good penetration there from the FIU line. C.J. Christian and Keegan Davis around the area of the tackle with under six minutes to play. Linebackers were downhill along with the safety and C.J. Christian and defensive linemen were in their gaps even as the power developed. Offensive linemen pulling. That was a great defensive effort stopping the run as the FIU defense been doing pretty well thus far this whole entire game. On second and 11, designed run. And a lot of space here. And missed tackles. There are flags at the line of scrimmage as Volkamp was surging towards the red zone. Hold might bring this one back. Volkamp trying to redeem himself for his last mishap in the fumble of a potential touchdown run earlier in this game. Volkamp's run is called back with that hole. We mentioned that Austin Reed's day is done. Malachi Corley's is in all likelihood as well. I haven't seen him on the field in quite some time. No reason to after 
Six reception, 52-yard day. Had a touchdown. And, of course, set the all-time receptions record in Western Kentucky history. And really after that breakout season last year, there were, there were plenty of opportunities coming his way as well. He, he talked about that heading into the season, too, as Veltkamp goes far side. Messer will bring it in, try to get some of that yardage back. As a helmet comes flying off here. You know, Corley said, look, I, I was never looking for the big stage. I, I like being the whole wheel rather than a spoke on the wheel. Said, I, don't, I didn't want to be another good player that went to Ole Miss or Texas A&M, whoever it may have been. I, I wanted to make a name for myself in my own way at Western Kentucky and leave a legacy there. He referenced the community, the way the coaches treated him, the way he's respected around Bowling Green. Those are all factors that, that brought him back. And, and, and those kind of stories, those are meaningful, not just for Western Kentucky, as Veltkamp scrambles to the near side here, gets to midfield. But that's what group of five programs are looking to do. Keep those you know, all-conference caliber players, continue to develop them, and have them be a part of Time bowl out. games, hopefully FIU. four wins down the They're road. First. And Corley Please reset the will game. certainly Locked always be remembered in Bowling Six Green seconds. for what he's done through the years in his time there out of Columbus, Ohio. Quite necessarily, those are the type of players you want a part of your program. Those are the ones that you're going to be able to build with, and both the program and the player will benefit tremendously. One, for the player being able to get as many targets as they need and the offense and team be able to be productive. Corley from Orange City, I should say. Burt from Columbus, Ohio. Back after this on ESPN+. Plus. Final 4.06 here from South Florida, Western Kentucky. This one away. Corey Munson. Standing at his own 35. Just out of frame here. There he is. AJ Ricketts, Jonathan Cyprian. Patterson back at his own 10. And rugby style punts. A sideways spiral. Patterson will fall on top of it here. You were telling me you used to try to get Coach Cristobal to let you take a punt back. He, he never he never budged, yeah? Never budged. <laughs> never budged. I was on the sideline remembering, asking, please let me take a kick return back on my last game. Well, did you have any did you have any precedent in, in high school to, to give yourself some, some credence to that that ask? I did. I okay. did. Now my president in high school wasn't too extensive, I might say, but I did have the capability <laughs> of doing so. <laughs> you caught a fair catch one time. That was your experience. <laughs> Jenkins still in here, just off the fingertips of Mitchell, a little bit out in front. Pass Great pass by Jenkins there. Unfortunate drop by Chris Mitchell. Ones, that was a pass. Those are the passes that he usually catches down the middle of the field and runs away with. By the way, Donovan Manuel sets the FIU all-time uh, forced fumbles record in a season, with that being his fifth. It's been a great season for Manuel playing in his final game. As this is looped up high, couldn't be hauled in on the far sideline by Jackson. Uh, trying to see who's on that far side, Jackson McDonald. What do you think about Donovan Manuel defensively and his pro prospects? I don't think you could act for a better senior season out of him, uh, not only being a productive player but a leader for the team. When you have an older player, a senior, playing well and also leading others to be able to follow suit, that's, that's all you can ask for as a program because that's what's going to set – the standard for the rest of your players on the team. It reminds me of Anthony Wentz in his time here at FIU after about 2014 to 2017. Ended up playing a little bit for the New York Jets. Similar size, stature, and numbers here in their time with the Panthers as Chris Mitchell hauls in another catch. Emmanuel will certainly get a look. Maybe even an invitation to a college all-star game, senior bowl, East-West Shrine, yeah. many other opportunities to be able to have that 
microscope looked in at you a bit as FIU comes here for I'm trying to keep the drive going here. And the whistles look to play dead before that. Western Kentucky, plenty of defensive standouts of their own, whether it's Upton Stout, Anthony Johnson Jr., both Richard seniors, Kendrick Sipkin, Richard Jr., Talik Allen, plenty of talent on that side of the football. FIU just got enough here to continue this offensive drive. Moving forward, I would love to speak about who would be here next year for the Panthers or for Western Kentucky. But it's hard to say with college football today. Nevertheless, both teams have pretty good pillars to stand on. Chris Mitchell gets to the 35-yard line here. Every Chris Mitchell, for example. Yeah. Well, every every school is trying to build their collectives as well. And Austin Reed said, "Look, that wasn't one of the top three, four, or five reasons I came back, but it was nice to know that you know the collective and Bowling Green took care of him." As this one is dropped on the far side. I think that was Patterson. Couldn't haul it in. Running before he caught the pass on that one, Patterson Patterson is definitely able to make those plays. Wish he could have that one back. Certainly has been fun to track the career of Austin Reed, who actually had a pit stop before even the University of West Florida. Started his career at Southern Illinois, but redshirted there, then went to Pensacola and got UWF a national title at the D2 level. Is this, oh, that was through the hands. Nearly another pick six there. And then Patterson couldn't hold on to what looked like a deflection. It'll be third down coming up here. Reed, even though the numbers haven't quite equaled last season, it's still been a, an amazing year. Leads Conference USA in yards, touchdowns. Does lead the league in picks as well. Uh, you take the good with the bad. And the kind of season and career Austin Reed has had in two years. On the hilltop, 228 left to play here. Fourth quarter, third down and 10. Jenkins steps up, throwing on the run over the first level, and Jalen Bracey. Hauls it in at the 42. Really like Bracey, young player, being able to adjust and catch that ball down the seam. Oh, better throws from Jenkins here today. Stepped up in the pocket and delivered that. That was a very good pass there by Jenkins. Owens trying to search for any sliver of pace here. Gets five yards. Jenkins at 198 yards. Uh, well, I should say now Pat surpasses 200 with that throw. 203 now for Jenkins. Empty formation. We can anticipate shorter throws here as we've been seeing that out of empty all night. Jenkins facing pressure once more. Got to set his feet, but overthrows Jackson Mc McDonald, who did have some space over there by the Western Kentucky sideline. Jenkins airmailed it a little bit. Yeah. I'd like to see him sit in that pocket a little bit longer just in that particular play. Now, maybe with the pressure that he's been getting throughout this season, giving him a little bit of happy feet. Right. But What are your, what are your impressions of Jenkins over the course of, of this 2023 20, true freshman campaign? You know, uh, like many would say, I can feel the leadership, the enthusiasm, and the swagger through a television screen. Uh, you can also see his arm talent and his decision-making, being able to get the ball into his playmaker's hands like this. Yeah, Jalen Bracey Bracy getting involved here late. Seventh catch, he's over 90 yards now on the evening in his final home game. His final game, I should say, as a FIU Panther. Mm -hmm. well, kind of a quick snap there. Jenkins, deep shot towards the end zone, overthrown and out of the reach of everybody. FIU's athletic director, Scott Carr, will swing it back to the official. Yeah. One eleven left to play here in Miami. Second down coming up. It'll be interesting to see where Western Kentucky goes bowling. Was talking to some folks around the program pregame, and they seem to think if uh, they picked up a win here today that Frisco might be a potential destination. Uh, Birmingham also in play. The What should be the Bahamas Bowl that is now in Charlotte <laughs> could be an another option. I'm, I haven't really kept 
following the news and that I don't, I don't know what they're going to call it. <laughs> is it the Bahamas Bowl <laughs> in Charlotte? Does Charlotte take ownership of that bowl game this year in terms of the naming? That's a little bit behind Eric Rivers there. I figure it would be kind of hard to still call it the Bahamas Bowl. You would, you would think. Hey, <laughs> it's going to be a little it's going to be a little colder in Charlotte. That was a, a very ill-timed uh renov stadium renovation down there in Nassau. They they got to know there's there's 200 college football players that want want to go down there in December. <laughs> they, have, they have to make some renovations at Thomas A. Robinson State. That's where FIU had their bowl game in the 2018 campaign. Third and ten here. Jenkins will step up himself and be tackled at the 20 to set up a fourth down and three. What will be FIU's final offensive timeout. play if they can't get three FIU. yards? Panthers will Their call second. a timeout. Media timeout. And that will lead us to uh, our final media timeout with uh, a minute left here in the game. 41-21 back after this for the finish. One minute left here in FIU season. Jenkins on fourth down and three. Will throw it on the run. Finds Rivers. Touchdown Panthers. And Rivers has his second of the night. Second of the night. Jenkins is able to elude pressure, step into the pocket, and find an open wide receiver downfield. This is when he's at his best. And this is why it's so inspiring to have him leading at the quarterback position for FIU as he continues to develop. He is only a true freshman and has a lot of development still to do, but this, this is why there's so much promise in this young man. Matias, another senior, boots this one through the uprights. It, it, it's been a gritty game for the freshman. It, not a lot was going right there early, but he battled through, and by the time this one is over. Looks like he'll be 25 for 43 for 235 yards and three touchdowns. Did have two interceptions as well today, but you see, you saw more than just a glimpse or two. You saw a bit of consistency towards the end there of what Jenkins is capable of. And look at the scoreline right now. Very respectable 13-point game. Doesn't really tell the whole story of how much Western Kentucky controlled this, but one thing's for certain in terms of FIU supporters' perspective, it's it's not 73 nothing again. That was that was <laughs> that was step one. Uh, Western Kentucky uh, again. The score line doesn't really tell the story. Austin Reed, 280 yards. Uh, they were playing their backups at the start of the fourth quarter, and they will pick up win number seven in route to wherever their bowl game destination may be. It's hard to complain about five bowl games in five years. Tyson Helton. As Panthers will go onside kick here, and they'll pick it up. How about that? And the onside kick was initiated by Matthew Enriquez. His first action as an FIU Panther here in the final home game, <laughs> and the Panthers recover. Recovered by, by Massis, starting cornerback for the Panthers. You know what? It's not too often you see a successful onside kick. Didn't really look like Western was lined up ideally for it, at least with the bounce that it took. How about Enriquez that couldn't have kicked that more perfectly? <laughs> I mean, he's he's cheered all season. He hasn't played. He's been behind Gabriel and Matias. And he comes in and puts that perfectly. Well, well, we Jenkins. Know, we know what he's been practicing. Uh, throws it out of play here, so... If you want to really kind of get back into the weeds of this year, if the Panthers could score in 20 or 30 seconds and recover another onside kick, then they'd set themselves up for a potential Hail Mary. It, it's still, the uh, probabilities here are still very low, but it's amazing to still even be evaluating that with where this game was. Yes, and that's the second recovered onside kick of the season for the Panthers. Second and 10, crossing route. Mitchell can try to get out of bounds here, and he does around the 35. It'll be really interesting here if, if it was a 10-point game, 
And you could start having the discussion, will he just get in field goal range, kick a field goal, make it a one possession game, then try to kick an onside kick again. But FIU needs to find the end zone here. And many great games end always in the last two minutes of every quarter. And it's just a different type of excitement when you're going in the last two minutes of the fourth quarter to try to make it a game. This, a long shot, but still entertaining. Jenkins trying to evade the sack, does. Coming near side, throwing on the run. Rivers makes the catch, turns at the 10 and is lassoed down at the seven yard line. I, that looked like it was destined to be picked. There were so many white jerseys and Rivers ends up with the catch. What a wacky finish here down the stretch in Miami. Jenkins again eluding pressure in Illegal the pocket the and then doing Offense. what he knows best, directing Number traffic one. and the throwing the ball to his open wide receiver for a great game. Loss of down, second However, down. Jenkins was across the line of scrimmage when he threw it. Correction, five yard penalty, loss of down, second down. And so that will negate the catch and Probably worse there for FIU is the time that comes off the clock. Still giving their home fans something to cheer about uh, until the final seconds tick off here. Don't leave your seats with these Panthers. Let's take another look. So the line of scrimmage was at the 40, it looked like 40 and a half yard line. And yeah, Jenkins was at the 40. Well, it wasn't by much at all for what i know the rule to be as long as a body part including your arm leg the ruling is on the field within the line of scrimmage you could throw the ball beyond the line of scrimmage fiu is challenging that ruling there's really uh, no reason not to hang on to the challenge at this point for mike mcintyre they only have one timeout left it's they're, they're not in any situation where they'll try to use three timeouts to get the football back so you might as well Challenge on that situation makes perfect sense here. That's the very close as I thought he was still behind the line of scrimmage, or at least a body part was, and throwing the ball. And we don't have the the yellow line or the the black line technology for the for the line of scrimmage first down marker on on these on these broadcasts. So it's hard, harder to tell, but it looks like that pylon on the on the far side. In between the 40 and 41. So you see it there, top side of your screen. It, it doesn't look like it's right on the 40 yard line. It looks like a little bit out to the right of it. So Jenkins, if it is on the 40 yard line, <laughs> the Panthers very well may have a case. But if it's a half yard further, it, it does look like Jenkins may have passed it by half a yard. Mm. I feel his, one of his foots were at the 40 yard line. His back leg was literally maybe After at the review, 39. The ruling on the field of an illegal forward pass is confirmed. Second down. And the referees, after review, confirmed their initial thought. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't just stand. It was confirmed. So they are, they are, they are sure of that call. And so it'll be second down and 15 from the 40-yard line. Can we get boos from the crowd on the <laughs> officials? <laughs> confirmation but you just you, you admire seeing Jenkins investment in this till the very end and what he's trying to trying to make plays happen knowing this very much is still probably a game at this juncture Jenkins a little high it was deflected and Upton Stout nearly had a pick already has a touchdown nearly had a pick as well yes and as as Jenkins does fight to make this game as competitive as possible, you admire that as a senior, as this being your last game, you definitely want it to be you walking out on the right note. And even if it's not a win, knowing that you gave your all and your teammates did as well. 21 seconds to work with. Jenkins sounded and just threw it in the direction of Rocky Beers, so that would not be uh, any intentional grounding. Fourth and 15. Mm -hmm. 
with 16 seconds left, fourth and a mile. Definitely anticipate this ball going to the sticks or towards the end of end zone. This will be the final offensive play of the season for FIU. Western rushes for Jenkins at midfield. Will heave it towards the end zone. Mitchell rising high. It's batted down. And that will be it for the Panthers offense. Western Kentucky can just take an E from here with nine seconds left. A very business-like performance on the road from Tyson Hilton's crew coming in here. First quarter going up 21 to nothing. Let 34 to seven at one point. Give FIU credit for playing till the finish here. Outscored Western Kentucky 28 to 20 over the final three quarters. But this is a fourth quarter in which Western went to its backups after a dominating first half. We'll take a knee and that'll do it for the regular season. Western Kentucky going bowling for the fifth time in five years, FIU finishes its 2023 season with the same mark as its 2022 campaign at four and eight. Certainly took steps forward, beat some teams that knocked them around last year, but just not the finish over the final few weeks that the Panthers were hoping for. But they battled till the end here tonight. Ultimately not enough against the high-powered Western Kentucky offense that's had the defense to match it at times this year. Impressive performance here in Miami today from Tyson Helton's crew. Impressive is just to stand a start. I mean, 41 points. You finished the game with your second string backups coming in to get some of that experience going into next year, which is very valuable. Austin Reed going into his bowl game, accompanied by the defense and the playmakers on that end. Western Kentucky came in, it's being the seventh win of their season. This is definitely uh, a good is definitely a good time for them, this being their fifth bowl game in a year. Uh, well, fifth bowl game consecutive for the last five years. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's promising for them, and I'm excited to see them in the future. Partner, enjoyed it. Appreciate all of you turning into our coverage on ESPN Plus all season long for our entire production team led by Nick Grito. I'm A.J. Ricketts, Western Kentucky. Off to another bowl game, 41-28. The final score here tonight has been a presentation of ESPN.